Reality TV shows like to pretend they're serious business. Just look at their names. Survivor, Hell's Kitchen, Ghost Hunters, the list goes on and on and on. But at least one of these supposedly edgy shows really does live up to its name. That show is Deadliest Catch which follows the crews of various fishing vessels on the Bering Sea, west of Alaska, as they brave the high seas and risk their lives in search of catching Alaskan king crabs. The show has aired on the Discovery Channel for a whopping 18 seasons, and viewers are still captivated by both the dangerous work and the salty personalities that do it. The sailors on Deadliest Catch often find themselves in real danger, as they're far out in the Bering Sea. You know, there's not many people you can call for help. They wrestle with heavy machinery. The pots they catch the crabs in weigh up to 800 pounds, as well as gargantuan waves up to 30 feet. Always the possibility of being thrown overboard or crushed by a machine constantly in the back of their minds. The hard work is worth it for the massive paychecks they earn. My money don't jiggle jiggle, it falls if they survive long enough to cash them in. Indeed, one of the first boats featured in the first season of the show, the Big Valley, sank and all but one of the crew drowned. Because of this, it certainly takes a special kind of person to step aboard one of these ships featured on Deadliest Catch, and those who do rarely return the same person. The adventures they experience result in memories they'll never forget, but what does the stress they endure do to them? And is it a price worth paying? Stay with me and you'll learn about two of the most colorful personalities who work these ships, where they came from, and where they eventually ended up. If you enjoy the video, remember to hit that thumbs up icon, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss our videos. But for now, just buckle up and get ready to get wet, as we find out exactly what happened. Phil Harris now, Phil may be the most popular fisherman to star on Deadliest Catch. The dude was six feet tall, sported a husky beard, and with his Harley Davidson tattoo, yeah, he was pretty sweet. A cantankerous man with a lot of heart, Phil was a staple on the show, and was featured captaining his ship, the Cornelia Marie. Some people before becoming TV stars live drastically different lives than they do now. For example, Mike Rowe, the narrator of Deadliest Catch, went to a quiet liberal arts school and studied communications. But Phil Harris never went to college or worked as a barista. He was just a fisherman through and through. Born on December 21st, 1956, you won't be surprised to hear that deep sea crab fishing is one of those things that starts in the family. As Phil was just just eight years old when he began fishing with his father. And I don't mean like I fish, you know, whistling the day away at a local creek. I mean working on intense, real fishing boats. After graduating high school, Phil began getting involved in crab fishing professionally. And as I don't even know if I could do it for a high salary, Phil Harris was so committed that he did it for free, at least for a little while, working as an unpaid deckhand until he earned a reputation. And the hard work and sacrifice certainly paid off. By the time he was 21, he was one of the youngest Alaskan king crab fishing boat captains in the industry. Now, if you react to stress in an unhealthy way, like snacking too much, you might be able to imagine how much you'd be binging if you were constantly risking your life for a few crabs. And Phil was not immune to these bad eating habits, and was said to indulge with his crew, smoking cigarettes, eating high calorie diets, all the while drinking cases of Red Bull and lots of pots of coffee. And so Phil began to suffer from various health conditions. In 2008, he suffered a pulmonary embolism. At one point, Phil was knocked from his bunk after hurricane force winds pummeled his boat and eventually crushed four discs in his back and the captain had to be taken to a hospital. You may ask why didn't Phil just take the money and get out and trade those 30-foot waves in the Bering Sea for pleasant sunsets in Florida or something. But that was never an option for Phil. 
Never for a second did he consider quitting the grueling work he had committed himself to, and eventually all this caught up with him in an irreversible way. In 2010, Phil was found on the floor of his room aboard the Cornelia. He had suffered a stroke and was unable to move the entire left side of his face. But Phil did not stop fighting. Even after a taxing operation and a medically induced coma, Phil recovered enough to spend some days with friends and family. So he took advantage of this time, giving serious advice to his children, telling his older son to get out of fishing, as he was certainly now aware of the costs he was paying. And on February 9th, Phil passed away. He lived as he died, a a grumpy, thrill-seeking fisherman who was, above all, committed to his job. So what do you think? Was Phil Harris's sacrifice worth it? Get in the comments and let us know. Blake Painter Painter only starred on Deadliest Catch for a season and change, appearing as an engineer and then captain of the FV Maverick. But his season two and three was more than enough time to become a fan favorite. His take no crap attitude and good old boy personality ensured that. Like him or hate him, you had to watch him. But little is known about Blake's past before starring on Deadliest Catch. Where did he come from? Blake was born in 1980 in the beautiful Astoria, Oregon. Like Phil Harris, Blake picked up deep sea fishing through a family connection and was fishing and crapping by three years old. Blake's dad, Jeff Painter, was the captain of his own ship called the Evening Star. But as a young kid, crab fishing wasn't exciting enough for him. And by the time Blake was 21, the young daredevil had been arrested for gun possession, recklessly endangering another person and criminal mischief, not to mention unlawful fishing and traffic violations. Nevertheless, Blake was able to get his life together enough to pilot his own boat. It was while piloting F.V. Maverick that Blake became a star on Deadliest Catch. And the guy had some famous quotes, like, there's no crying in crab fishing, and it's a crab boat, it's not a democracy. There's one guy in charge, and now I'm that guy. Blake proved that, despite his wild boy persona, he was not a guy to mess around with. And the young gun quickly proved himself capable enough to control both his boat and his father's boat too, which he took over when the latter was diagnosed with cancer in 2005. And now Blake seemed to have it all, a wild, lucrative career as both a fisherman and a TV star. During one successful run, Blake claimed to have made 50 grand in less than 72 hours. He was also said to have a girl in every port. I'll take you to the candy shop. Not a bad life for a bad boy fisherman, but nothing good can last forever. And when you're on the high seas, everything is constantly changing. Blake's life was no exception. He soon left Deadliest Catch, allegedly because the show's producers were misrepresenting him. And then a series of unfortunate events happened. The hard work of deep sea fishing had been catching up to Blake for a long time. Physical ailments began to bother him more and more. For example, he suffered from a condition known by fishermen as the claw, in which his hands clamped closed and sent pain up to his elbows. The man was paying the price for incidents years prior, like the one time he was forced to put hooks through his hand and fingers to avoid losing arms to a device called the crucifier. And Blake's run-ins with the law began to return too. In in July 2013, Blake was arrested for a DUI. In March 2015, he was arrested for driving with a suspended license. And in 2016, he was almost killed when he slammed his car into a tree and had to be airlifted to a hospital. It just kept getting worse and worse. Blake began to turn to substances to cope with the stresses of his life. He was arrested in his hometown of Astoria after being caught smoking heroin while driving. And sadly, in 2018, Blake Painter was found dead of an overdose in his home at the tragic age of 38. We hate reporting this sad, sad end. So what do you all think? Could Blake Painter have lived a quiet, more peaceful life after his career? Or does the grueling work of captaining a fishing boat truly sink you to the bottom? Would you do that kind of work? Let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, there's still more crabs to be caught and adventures to be had. And fans of Deadliest Catch know where to find them. If you enjoyed the video, smash that thumbs up icon with your crab mallet and make sure you're subscribed so you can come back and we can tell you what happened.